When you minimize a Unity game on a computer or click the home button on a mobile game, the app stops running and any code that was running freezes. Uh, this is problematic for systems that need to run regardless of whether the app is open or closed, like a game timer. So I'm going to show you quickly how to make sure a timer acts as if it doesn't stop running when the game is closed and then reopened. Uh, first I'm going to create a simple timer, so if you already have one, just skip this part of the video. So uh, creating the timer, I'm going to quickly Make the timer text and put in a random number. Maybe center it. <clears throat> okay, and then uh, I'll create the timer script. Call the timer and open it up. Cool. So for now, I'll just get rid of all this stuff. So to make the timer, first we'll have a field that takes the text. So call it timer text. Uh, if you're not familiar with serialized field, it's basically just the same as writing public so that it sh so that the uh, field shows in the editor, but uh, stops it from being public. So you can still set it to private, but it will show in the editor. Um, so if I save that and go back to Unity uh, in my timer, I can add this timer script to it. And you'll see that the timer text appears and it allows us to drag the text mesh pro component into our timer text script. So that's all good. Let's go back into the script. Um, I will make another field called uh, the actual, which will you know store the actual timer uh, in seconds. So put it as a float and then a third one, which is a Boolean and we'll call it as timer running. And this will tell us fun enough if the timer is running. Um, and then the fourth one actually we'll make called timer duration, which can be the start duration. And we'll set it to 60 seconds or 60. Uh, so make a start function and we will set the timer equal to the timer duration. So this is basically setting our timer to 60 seconds and um, we'll set the time is timer running equal to true. No, true. Cool. And then we'll have the update function which will decrement the timer. So we'll check if the timer is running. And if it is, we will time do timer time dot delta time. If you're not familiar with this uh, delta time, it says here it's the interval in seconds from the last one to the current one. So if it basically allows us to uh, run something without it being dependent on the frame. So if you're running at 60 FPS, then you're gonna have this update function run 60 times a second and that means that you want to dec decrement your timer by a 60th of a second. And so after 60 frames in a second, it will go down by one, if that makes sense. And so 30 frames will be different, but because we have delta time, uh, the overall result will be the same. In one second, the time will go down by uh, one. Cool. And if the timer is running, we want to actually check first that the time is greater than zero. Enter that. So we'll check if it's uh, above zero. And then if it's not, we will set the timer equal to zero just in case uh, it happens to go slightly below zero. Um, we'll set the timer running to false. So this is basically the, uh, this is our basic setup of uh, a timer that runs in the update loop. And the final thing we need to do is make sure that the timer text we have in our game updates based off the timer we have in the script. So to do that, we just reference our timer text field, uh, get the text component and then set it to our internal timer and convert that to a string. So now if I save and go back to Unity, press play, you'll see that we have a not so nice looking timer that does what we need it to do. So go down every second. And the problem with this is that if you minimize the window, it's going to freeze the timer at whatever time it was when you minimized it. And when you reopen it, it's going to start from that time. And we don't want that uh, in most games. You want the timer to continue when someone closes it, or at least in uh, online games, for example. So uh, make sure that if you're in project settings and you go to player and you're in whatever I'm doing in Windows Mac Linux settings, if you open resolution and presentation, you need to make sure that run and background is ticked off. Um, because if this is ticked, then it's actually just going to function normally. And if you minimize it, uh, it will continue to run. So uh, run and background, make sure that's ticked off. And the, and the reason is because like in a mobile game, for example, this isn't an option. You can't run in the background. In like iOS or Android games, you, you they just don't let you run code um, from your game if it's closed. That's that. So now if I play this and 
minimize it at 55 seconds. And then I'll wait five seconds. What we want is it to go down to uh, 50 seconds. But what's actually going to happen is it will start, it will just continue from where we minimized it to so 55. Uh, and that's a big problem. So to fix this, we can do something very, very simple. If we go back to our timer script and we create a new function, we're going to use a Unity API called on application pause. So on application uh, pause. Uh, it's a callback that has a ball in it that will be true. I'm going to change this to is paused. When this was fired, the game is paused and false if it's not. So what, you, what we need to do is we need to check that our timer is running first because this will be called on start and we don't really care um, if it's called on start at the beginning. So we'll check if the timer is running and if the bool is equal to true. So this is just, this is essentially just shorthand version for that. So if uh, the boolean is equal to true we're going to debug.log first and just so we know the game yeah, paused and then else so this will just be if it's if the is paused ball is equal to false then the game has been unpaused unpaused okay cool so then we can just check this quickly that it works i'll go back to unity start it and i'll put the console up so now if i minimize it at 55 seconds and reopen it again you're going to see that we've had a game paused and then a game unpaused so we know that this is working and it's being called properly so now we just need to add some functionality and the best way to do this i found is to log the current time uh the the game was paused and then when it's unpaused you look at the current time when it's unpaused and adjust the timer by the difference so to do this we're going to create a new field called of type date time and we're going to call it date time of pause Let's go with that. And then here, when the game is paused, we're gonna um, we're gonna set the date time of pause equal to uh, yeah Visual Studio Studio did it for me. We're gonna set it to date time uh, dot now, which will be uh, the current time and the current date. And then in uh, the unpause section, we're going to set our we're gonna change our timer by the difference. So we're gonna get the date time dot now, which is the time when we unpause it. And we're going to subtract the time that we've logged when we did pause it, which is that. And then we need it in seconds. So we're going to, we, we don't care about the date, obviously, unless I've paused it for a really, really long time. Uh, and so this is what we want. And you'll see we get an error because it says cannot completely convert double to a float. So our timer is a float, but uh, this total seconds is a double. So to get rid of this, we can just cast it as a float and it will be happy. Okay. So now that we've done that, we're mostly there to be honest. So I'll go back to Unity and I'll start and I'll minimize it at 55 seconds. Mm, no. And when I unpause it, uh, instead of starting again at 55 seconds, it should start at about 50 seconds because I'll have paused it for about five seconds. If we go back, okay, well, I paused it for 10 seconds apparently. Uh, yeah, and so that works. So again, if I minimize it at 38 seconds, uh, wait one, two, three, four seconds. Uh, it will start again at lower. And so you'll see that we're adjusting the timer by the time we paused for one. So that's how you make a, a timer that adjusts for the time that was paused. Hope that helps.